And Friday night, June 29th, on the phone with uh, Patrick Stroop, the uh, Armstrong, Missouri, and correct me on any of these things if I'm wrong, the Armstrong, Missouri native and former Central Methodist uh, distance runner who picked up uh, race walking while he was there and had quite a bit, bit of success. And uh, four years ago at the 08 trials, ended up third with the bronze medal in the 20K race walk and just didn't have a, uh, a fast enough time to... to, to, to uh, during that Olympic berth, tell me, tell me a bit, a little bit about that was like in Eugene four years ago. Uh, it was, it was good four years ago. It was, uh, I think that was my, it was still pretty early in my career, and uh, so for me it was just kind of another good opportunity to have a race, and uh, I did, I did well. I'm not an amazing time, but it was, I think, a personal best for me at the time, so I was happy with it. And uh, to finish third at my first trials was good, very good. Tell me, uh, um, you came away with the bronze, and what was your time? I think the the qualifying standard was what one twenty two or one twenty three, and you were what one twenty seven or eight. Uh, yeah, I think I was around one twenty eight. I'm not positive on that. I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, was it heartbreaking, or did you take it hard? That um... well, no. I mean, I, I went into that trials with knowing I was way off the time, and I hadn't I hadn't been training seriously, but for maybe uh, not even probably not even a year in, in college, I I trained, but I wasn't training very hard as, as I should. I did a lot of running, and so in my first Olympics, I wasn't expecting to make a team. I was just kind of racing to race the race and get some experience at the trials. And uh, uh, I was happy with the PR and really happy with third place. Um, so it was, it was a good experience. Came away with it thinking, hey, this is something I should I should continue doing. And tell me, uh, um, was it your first U.S. medal or had you medaled previously before that? I'm trying to remember. Uh, I don't know if I... I think it, no, I, yeah, I think that was my first uh, medal at a, a championships or Olympic trials. Okay. I believe. Yeah, yeah, and earned uh, several several different medals at different 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 uh, um, several different medals at the uh, at, at different different distances throughout the year at the U.S. Championships and represented the U.S. All right. What probably what three or four times at, at different race walk cups and world cups and stuff like that. Yeah, um, maybe once or twice before that I represented the U.S. a couple times, and then uh, after that, I mean, since then I've, I've been on several teams, smaller teams. Yeah, yeah. and uh, um, I believe you you uh, have worked some with. Uh, with Wayne and, and his wife for uh, the Columbia yeah, race walking yeah. aficionados. Tell me about 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 uh, about them. Uh, Wayne and uh, Gail have helped me out several times with with form and technique and stuff like that. And uh, Gail's a very accomplished walker herself. I think she's got a master's world record, I believe. And then uh, Wayne's just an uh, extremely helpful person and, and good with technique and stuff. And my my coaches live in Columbia as well, uh, Nick and Evelina Slotinska. Oh, they, okay. They help me a lot with my uh, training schedule and, and things like that. Yep. Okay. And uh, how long have they been in Columbia? Uh, they moved to Columbia a year ago, and they, they lived in Fayette, where I went to college, because uh, she went to college at Central Methodist for, with me for three years. I think she was a year ahead of me in school. And then that's how you got introduced to it, is that correct? Uh, no, the girl who initially taught me how to race walk was, uh, I think she was a junior when I was a freshman, and uh, she picked it up kind of like I did, just not that great of a runner, so she learned how to race walk to score points at the conference meet. Right. And she was an All-American a couple times, and had a really good form, and just so I was lucky to learn from her, from somebody with good te technique initially, so I, I've never had any issues with technique problems. So I learned it right from the beginning and it kind of came natural to me. Right, right. 
I'm sure you had some probably busy busy conference meets then when you'd run some distance races and then you'd uh um yeah. you know, you hit the race walk you hit the race walks and uh Yeah, they, they, they took it pretty easy on me. I would uh I'd do some four by eights and, and stuff like that, but I I I was just borderline to where I'd score points in, in other events so they'd kinda take it fairly easy on me. Yeah. I, I could I could do a four by four and, and hold my own but I wasn't blowing, I wasn't pulling anybody out of the water by any means. Right, right. And that's Wayne Arm Brewster and Gail. We, I don't know what we mentioned their last name. Um, uh, Gail Johnson. Oh, Gail, yep. that's right. She works, she, she works at the. She's a. At the university. Veterinary pathologist at the university. Yep. Right, right. And then, uh, um, and so, how? Tell me how the fifty k was it? The fifty k uh, trials in in January. How that how that went for you? Fifty uh, k trials in January went. Uh, I would say good. Um, not good enough, of course, but I, 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 it was only my second 50K, so it's kind of an event where you really got to learn through experience on doing it. Um, I walked, I think, seven or eight minute personal best from my first one, and uh, I did okay, you know what? We all started off on B standard pace, and it's basically going to be, you know, attrition to see who could hold the pace, and I think I stayed with the pack until, oh, 33 or 4K, and then started falling off, and uh, then after that, it was just kind of survival mode to try and finish the race. Yeah. Um, it's uh, 50K, is, you know, long and tough, you do what you can for as long as you can, and then it's, if you can finish type deal. Right. But I was, I was happy with it for my second 50K, you know, I would have liked to have made the podium, but again, I was like... Uh, well, I don't know. The standard is 409 for the B standard, I think, and I did 419 something or 420. Right. So I was almost 10 minutes off that standard. But again, you know, this is my second 50k. So. And did you let's see, pl- place fourth or fifth? Is that right? Yeah, I got I got fourth in that race. Okay. Yep. And then I think f- it was February or March where the. Uh, Oh, I believe it was the qualifying for the World Cup team, and, and saw that. Uh, talked to Wayne a month or two ago. Said you decided to skip that. Tell me what what that was, and what you, what you, what what how how you came to that decision. I uh, just to get ready and I, a whole I, lot of walking. I skipped, uh, I skipped indoor nationals this year. Oh, that's what it was. And, right. And then uh, the World Cup trial, I did. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yep. And then. Uh, um, and then obviously a, a, a year ago at the indoor U.S. meet, you pulled off, uh, I believe your first, first national title yeah. and the, uh, yeah. what was it, the, what's the distance indoors? And it's, it's, uh, it was a 3K this year, last year was a 5K. Okay. I just moved it down one. Yeah. This year it's a 3K. Yeah. And I hear you, uh, got some help from, uh, some officials and, uh, well, not necessarily help, but you pulled away from one of the legends of U.S. race walking, kind of, uh, I guess, it was DQ. Well, he, he pulled away from me, and he, and he shouldn't have, apparently. Yeah. Uh, I think with two laps to go, he, he had two warnings and took off and got his third warning there pretty quickly after that, and they pulled him off the course before he could finish. Yeah. Because he wasn't, he wasn't walking, he was running. So, yeah. uh, so I got to win that race, which I was. You know, I was happy about it. It was my first big, big, big championship win. So that, that was nice. Yeah. And then, uh, um, what was any difference there, walking at a little, or competing a little bit at altitude in, in Albuquerque? Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> for, for me, it sucks. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't like altitude that much. Um Indoors is kind of tough to begin with. You got dry air most of the time, so you're hacking and stuff at the end of the race, you know. But that, that's everybody. Yeah. And uh, so then it's, I think, uh, around 5,000 feet, maybe just under. So it, it's tough for me. I'm a little bit bigger of a guy. So altitude tends to affect me poorly, you know, because I, I, I've never gone and done altitude training. I should, but I haven't. So some people have that advantage on me. They've experienced it more. And, or they prepared better either way, you know. It's not an excuse, it's just the way it is. Right, right. Um, 
and I assume you've you've uh, met and uh, at least gotten to meet the uh, the only other U.S. the only U.S. Uh, race walk medalist male who uh, lives in Colombia. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've introduced myself once several years ago at a at a ten k there in Colombia. He was, I think, he started the race and uh, just met him that one time. But yeah, he seemed like a real nice guy. Yeah, and I'm going blank. I know we he we um, inducted him into the Larry Young. I think yeah, he yep, that's it. We he was inducted in the Missouri Tracking Cross Country Coach Association Hall of Fame a few years ago, and uh, yep. uh, an artist and sculptor in uh, in mm-hmm. Columbia. But um, tell me what how the spring's gone, and and what you were what you were hoping for and shooting for leading up to the trials. Um, the early spring went well. I uh, did. A, we did a race out here in Eugene in May, I believe, the World Cup Trials, uh, and I walked a personal best there by um, maybe ten or fifteen seconds. Uh, it was like a one twenty six low, which I was happy with. Um, it wasn't amazing, but you know it's good to have a PR early in the season. Um, the, we had a young kid there, uh, Trevor Barron. Uh, he's 18. And, uh, he's he walked, amazing, huh? He, yeah, he walked uh, 122 low and got the Olympic A standard of that race for the first time. And uh, so that kind of gave me a, a shot of what's to come. Um, shot in the arm, kicking the butt, whatever. And uh, so then from that, went to the World Cup race in Thurians, Russia, and just had an awful time. <laughs> so... Coming back from that, I was hoping to get some good training in and uh, prove to myself that that was just a bad race, and uh, I was in, I'm in a lot better form than that. So my hopes were to, you know, have a great time here and, and place well, and maybe make a team if I have a really good day. Right, right. Yep. And uh, so when did, did you go out and, and watch all the events from, from day one on, or... No, I, I got out here Wednesday, Okay. and I've been kind of sulking in my hotel room. <laughs> yeah. It took my wife getting out here to kind of get me excited about going to see things. So I guess so even today, we, even uh, before you left for the trip, you 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 were injured on on Monday. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, Monday night about uh, nine thirty. Uh, Just broke a glass jar on myself. A milk jug. Oh no. You got a cut yeah. in your foot? Yeah, it's uh, just above my ankle. I I, uh, I got two pretty good sized cuts. Well, not big, I mean 12 stitches. Oh, and, I, no. and I cut a little bit of my uh, anterior tibialis tendon. Not much, but yeah. just a little. So, pretty sore and kind of swollen. Well, how, uh, how devastating was that for you? Yeah, yeah. I, I could have done something different to change it, but I didn't think of it at the time, so what, I mean, there's nothing I can do about it now. Yeah. So, just kind of go with it, you know. Tell me, uh, what, uh, um, did you, were you feeling fit? Did you, did you feel like going in? There was, if you had a great day, you, you could, you could, uh, be in that top three and hit that standard? Two long legends of 
or were they still were they entered both still entered? I I thought I saw them. Yeah. Tim Tim was in the race is entered in the race and I, he has a better time going in than me. He, he beat me at the World Cup trials as well by I mean, to, by twenty seconds. He ran walked just under a one twenty six. And he would have been tough to beat. He's a champion and he knows how to get up for big races and he always does. Um, so it's just kinda gonna be stick with him, you know. But it's also a 20k on the track, so everybody's gonna see, be seen by the judges so many more times than they are in a road race. So that plays into my favor because I have good form. So any, anything could happen, you know. I I think I think being on the track probably would have helped me um, as far as other people having issues with judges and, and me maybe not. Right. You know, but that that comes down to the judges and how sure. everybody else does. Right. They could all been. So they were moving it this year into into Hayward or just a different local track? Yeah, it, no, it's going to be on, on Hayward track this time, you know. Uh, they, they, we had it at... I know, four years ago it was outside the... the football stadium. Yeah, outside of yeah. Stadium. Which I, I didn't mind, but yeah. uh, they felt we would get a little more attention if we were on the track, so we'll give right. it a shot and go on the track. Right. Yep. Um... And uh, do you know anything about Trevor? His story? Did he pick it up as also after a running distance, or did, was he in one, got in one of these clubs as a kid and take to it real um, quickly? I'm not sure exactly how it started. I think he uh, he did cross. Well, he started out swimming, and then he had issues with epilepsy, I think, and had to give up swimming because um, he was he would have seizures, I think. And then uh, he he took up running and cross country, and I'm not sure if he picked it up in a club or if it's just he saw that there was an opportunity. Um, as an American, race walking isn't that strong, so if you're young and good, you can go a lot of places with race walking. So right. he, he took it up as a, as a, I guess, as a chance to go places like like me and everybody else, you know. Right. Right. And I guess John Nunn was the other one. He and Tim Seaman, the long veterans, the excellence. So I yeah. guess those two guys, yep. and obviously Trevor, and that you would have been in there battling with. Well, yep. now, now well, that, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I feel well kind of. He's a, he's a little ahead of me right now. <laughs> he's been training a little more seriously than I have, though. Who's that, Trevor? Yeah. John. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, tell me. Uh, Tell me what it's going to be like tomorrow when you get up early and head over the track, and instead of you, your first ever race on Hayward in Hayward, it, you're going to be in the stands watching. What's that going to be like? Oh, uh, you know, it'll it'll be kind of weird and a little frustrating, but you know, I can't I can't kick myself over it too much. It's just one of those things, you know. Life will go on. Um. I'll, I'll enjoy watching my friends race and, and get to, to see it and not, you know, you know, enjoy seeing them do well and try and take something away from that and maybe motivate myself for the year to come. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, it won't be, it'll be fun to sit back once, you know, but definitely not as fun being in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then, uh, and I'm sure once those goes, those three guys get on the podium and they you give them those flags, I'm sure that'll be tough, but uh, hopefully you'll you'll have your time to, to enjoy that moment down the line, so. Yeah. And uh, tell me, are you, you living in Fayette or Armstrong, and what, are you, you kind of like uh, Larry Young, or you do similar art or metal metal type work, or tell me what you do. Uh, I uh, I live near. I live in between Fayette and Armstrong, Missouri. My address is Armstrong, and uh, I've been working for my father on a dairy farm for the last five years. Okay. Um, helping him out with that. I put in you know anywhere from thirty five to forty five hours a week, and uh, he's just recently quit doing the dairy farming and and starting to do beef cows now. Oh, I see. So I, um, so I'm not helping him anymore. Just occasionally when he needs, you know. And my wife has just graduated from vet school at the University of Missouri. Oh, cool. And so uh, I took a, another job after that this summer. I'm helping a friend build a house, 
and uh, I think this next year I'm going to take off and let my wife be my sugar mama. <laughs> try and try and train full time and just see um, if I need to, if I can improve enough to where I feel like it's worth it to train full time for a couple more years and right and see what happens because uh, we can where I live we can live cheap and do just fine on on her salary. Yeah. So, for, for a year, I'll train all out and see, see what happens. Right, right. So the uh, the bottle accident with the bottle dropping the ball, that wasn't a, a working at the farm with a, a, a bottle of milk at the farm, was it? Well, no, as my wife, well, kind of. My wife and I ran out of milk at about 8 o'clock. And I'm like, man, I really want some milk for breakfast in the morning. So we just cruised down to the barn and I filled up a jar, stuck it in the front of the truck, and my dog jumped in the truck and I wanted to throw him in the back so I was pulling him out I was thinking I was pulling him out man I bet I pulled this jar out on me too and I did yeah. and the jar bounced off the running board and broke and then bounced into my leg I was like dang I bet that's going to be a big bruise so oh, well. I threw my dog in the back of the truck and kind of looked down and saw blood going all over my shoe I was like oh crap oh no <laughs> you know so, not a bruise. Yeah. But, you know, going get some stitches. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's sure heartbreaking. I know, uh, after just enjoying and just a good... Oh, there's a lot of people who got a whole lot more stuff going on than that. It's not that bad. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> I tell people that after my experience at the trials in 08, that, I mean, it's such a fun and exciting and dramatic meet, but it's so... Anxiety filled yeah, I mean, so every, every single race every single race I watch I'm so excited and then I'm also so heartbroken for right. you know, the people who are so close and they've been working just as hard as the people who won. Right. You for know, years and years a, and years, you know. Yeah. It's, it's a tough it's it's a tough balance. Yeah. You know? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, good luck. Good luck at uh uh, tomorrow cheering them on I, I'm sure that, that's probably going to be a pretty sight probably uh, Hayward Field early in the morning I think the race gets off at 7.30 so it should, it should be fun to make it there and, and wander around the whole stadium and get some great shots of just the magnificent Hayward Field with you know athletes trying to make that Olympic team so as a you know a photographer I'm kind of jealous that I'm not there and get that you know an, you know an hour to shoot some just beautiful shots so yeah, yeah, but, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, good luck. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, uh, um, we'll have three guys that, that make it the standard, and then on Saturday, women, and they go on to represent yep. well, and hopefully you recover quickly, and um, we'll look forward to yeah, see you. how things go down the line, and hopefully uh, some, some great things to, to come from you. Yeah, I hope so, too. Thank you very much. All right. Well, Appreciate thanks. It. Take care, Patrick.